Chemistry, this is the answers video to day 42 Hess's Law. I'm going to go ahead and do all of the problems here. Um, it's your job to practice them and be sure you know how to do these uh, problems for the uh, tests. Okay, so what does thermal chemistry study and why is heat energy important in chemical reactions? Thermal chemistry studies the heat that goes into and out of a chemical reaction, which is called enthalpy, change in enthalpy actually. And it's important because it's the only energy that comes into or exits a chemical reaction. So it represents the energy of that chemical reaction and of the energy in the bonds of the chemical reaction that are either being broken or put back together. All of that is expressed in the form of heat. So that's why it's important in the study of chemistry. Okay. Two, complete the Hess's Law reaction in the lecture video. So that's self-explanatory. You can go to the lecture video to get that. All right, so we'll move on. All right, and we're going to do um, this problem right here. Use Hess's Law to compute the enthalpy of reaction or enthalpy of combustion for the following. So this is the target reaction. It's what you're trying to match. So you're not going to change this reaction at all. You're trying to make these two reactions match with that. And since you know the enthalpies of these two reactions, after you manipulate these so that they match this, you add these up and that will give you the enthalpy, the unknown enthalpy. That's what you're trying to find of this target reaction. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. So we're going to label this equation one and equation two. Draw a line underneath there. All right, so what you do is you find something in the target that appears only once in these two reactions down here. So if we look down here, we start with carbon. We look down here, we only see carbon right there. It's nowhere else in these reactions. So what do we see? You ask two questions, how many moles and which side of the arrow? So this carbon is has one mole and this one has one mole. I do like to write the one coefficients of one in front. Just to emphasize that there is a number there, but it's not required to do that go and there we go so there's one mole here and one mole here and they're both on the left side of the arrow that means you don't need to make any change to reaction one it's already set up so that the carbon is where it should be however we're still going to go ahead and write it down here and so we're going to call this 1a and I'm going to ignore the states of matter here the gas and solid okay that's not really essential for this and since we didn't change this reaction, we don't change the enthalpy of that reaction either. Okay. And then I like to draw a line through this so I don't get confused and add this number in when I'm going to my final calculation for enthalpy. So we're totally done with reaction one. Okay, now we look at something else. Stay away from oxygen because it appears in more than one place down here so that it doesn't only appear once, so don't do that. Let's come over to carbon monoxide here. We have one mole here, and we have one mole over here in equation two. So they're one, the moles are correct, one and one. But this one is on the left side of the arrow, and this one's on the right. So we're going to have to reverse this equation. By the way, I'd like to note what I do in each equation. So over here, I'm going to put nothing. We didn't change equation one at all. And equation two, we're going to reverse. Okay, so here we go. So the one CO2 comes over here. Okay, there we go. We reversed it. And when you reverse a reaction, you change the sign on the enthalpy. So the delta H goes from negative 283 to positive 283. There we go. Okay. All right. So now we're done with this. So I'm going to draw the line through that right there. And now we go ahead and let me see what cancels and what adds. Well, the C... The C appears here and appears in our target. So we're going to put a box around that, meaning we're going to use that one. All right, we'll stay away from O2 for right now. So the one CO appears on the right side here and on the right side here. So we're going to put a box around that. And here we have one CO2 on the left side of equation 2A and one CO2 on the right side of equation uh, 1a, so they're going to cancel. You can think of them as subtracting or canceling. 
it's really properly thought of as a subtraction. Okay, so those are going to go away. And now we have 1 O2 and 1 half O2, and they're on opposite sides of the arrow. This one is on the left, and this one is on the right side of this arrow. So it's minus. So 1 minus 1 half equals 1 half. And it goes on the side with the larger of the two numbers. So 1 minus 1 half is 1 half. It's going to go over on this side because this is 1 and this is only 1 half. So it's going to go over on the left side of the arrow. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and write this down. So we're going to use both of these, but we're doing a subtraction. They're not canceling out, they're subtracting. So I'm going to come down here and write what I have in boxes. I have 1C plus the 102 minus the 1 half 02, so that's going to be 1 half 02 over on this side. Okay, and then I have the CO on the right side of the arrow. And everything else has canceled. We've taken care of the four boxes. And so we see that the equation matches the target up here. So that means we're ready to go ahead and add these numbers together. Okay. So it's going to be negative 393.5 plus 283.0. And that gives us a delta H of negative 110.5 kilojoules. And that's our final answer. That's the answer. That's the answer to the question mark right there. So that's what we want. Okay, let's move on. Let's do four. We've done that. We did this in class. Um, let's go ahead and do it though. This is the most complicated one because there are three equations. All right. And it's also complicated. There's a lot of NOs all over the place. It gets a little confusing. Okay, so here we go. So let's start with N2O and let's come down and see where do we see N2O and see if it only appears once. Okay, there it is. And that's the only place. Okay, so here it is. It's in equation three. And it's in our target. Draw a line there. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take equation three and we're going to bring it down. We're going to keep the equations one, oh, one, two, and three in the same order down here. So equation three is going to be written way down here. And we ask, what do we need to do to this to make it match this? So two things, moles. Well, this has two and this only has one. So we need to divide this by two, or you could think of it as multiplying by one half either way. Both of them appear on the left side of their arrows, so we don't have to reverse the equation. So all we're going to do to this one is divide by 2, come down here, so it becomes N2O, and we'll put the coefficient 1 in front of that. And here's the situation with a fractional coefficient, okay? And I'm going to omit the states of matter. They're really not uh, important here, okay? They can be, actually but we're not going to deal with them here at this point as being significant. Okay. All right, so what we did was we divided this by 2, so we have to divide this number by 2. And when we do that, we get 81.6, and it's a negative. All right, okay, so we've taken care of equation 3, so we're going to put a line through it. All right, now let's go over to NO2 here the next thing over in our target. And where do we see it? There it is right there, and it doesn't appear anywhere else. Okay, so we have to look at this. Here we have NO2, here we have 2NO2. So we're gonna have to divide this by two to be like this. The other thing is side of the arrow. This is on the left side of the arrow, this is on the right side of the arrow. So we're gonna do two things in one step we are going to um, divide by two and we're going to reverse. Okay, and let me go ahead well, before I forget, put equation 3a right here. And this is gonna be equation 2a here. So this is going to get reversed and cut in half. So it's gonna become NO2 on the left side. This gets cut in half, so it's NO on the right side. And this gets cut in half, so it's o, one half O2 on the right side. Okay, so we, we're going to divide this number by 2, and because we reverse, we're going to change the sign. We're going to do both of those things. So 113.1 divided by 2, and it's going to be delta H. All right, so we've taken care of that. Now we're going to put a line through this one. Okay. So that the 
equations we still have are equation 1 and then 2a and 3a. So now we need to get to 3NO. So we come down here and we see NO right here. Now let's come down to our revised equations because we're not using these anymore and we see NO right there. That's the two places we see NO. They're both on the right side of the arrow. That means we're going to add them. And again, this is 1NO and put the coefficient 1 there. So on the right side, what we now have is 1NO plus 2NO equals 3NO. So that happens to add up perfectly. That means we don't need to do anything to equation 1. The 2NO is exactly what we want. We want 2NO on the right side of the arrow to add to this 1NO to get to the 3NO. So equation 1 is good, but I'm still going to come down and that, and I'm still going to come down. If you don't like the arrows, you don't have to write them. And I'm going to do equation 1A. And we're not going to change it. We're going to write it exactly like this. That means we don't change the enthalpy because we didn't change the reaction in any way. Okay, so there we go. We've taken care. We're going to scratch this one out. And these are our three equations down here. So let's see if they add up properly. So we have NO2 up here. And we have it here. They match up, so I'm going to come down here and write it down here. It's going to go on the left side of the arrow. And I usually put the arrow way in the middle because you don't know what else you're going to need down there. Okay, what else? Um, we have um, NO2 here, and we have it up here in the target. And it's on the left side of the arrow. So it's going to be plus N O two. Okay, N O two right there. All right, and let's see. Let's cancel some things. We have an N two on the left side here and on the right side here, so we cancel those. What else do we have? We have. A, uh, that's pretty much it. Now we have our 2NO plus 1NO on the right side that gives us 3NO. All right. And now here we have 1O2 on the left side of this arrow, and we have 1 half O2 on the right side of this, and 1 half O2 on the right side of this. So first let's add these together. 1 half plus 1 half is 1. So you have between these two, you have 1O2 on the right side. And on this one, you have 1O2 on the left side. That means they're all going to cancel out. So this cancels, this cancels, and this cancels. So everything has either been used or canceled. Put a box around this. That was part of the 2 plus 1 is 3. So that means we have, we have recreated this reaction up here. So now to find the enthalpy, we simply add these numbers. And when you do that, you get the final answer of delta H for the unknown reaction up here, the target reaction, is going to be <clears throat> 155.65 kilojoules. And excuse my bad handwriting, but there it is, 155.65 kilojoules. Okay, the last one here is pretty easy. So here's our target up here. Okay, and here's equation one and equation two. So let's start right here. P406, where do we find it? It's right here. So it's one mole here and one mole here, but they're on opposite sides of the arrow. So you're going to have to reverse this one to get this over to the left side where the target P406 is. Okay, so we reversed it. We changed the sign on that. Okay, now O2, we've got two of them there, so we want to stay, leave them alone. This one, P4010, appears only once down here, and it's right there. And we see we have one mole of it here and one mole there. It's also on the right side of the arrow here and on the right side of the arrow there, so we don't change equation two. That's already where we need it. 
So we come down here. Okay, and let me scratch these. We're done with these. You don't want to accidentally add these numbers in. And I have done that before. Okay, let's see what's going on here. So P406 only appears once. It's on the left side, so we're going to put it here. Put my arrow just randomly in the middle there like that. Uh, what else? We have a P4 on the left side of this arrow and on the right side of this arrow, so they're going to subtract or cancel out. We have P4010. It's the only place we see it. It's on the right side of the arrow, so I'm going to come over here. Okay, and then finally we have five oxygens on the left side of this arrow and three oxygens on the right side of this arrow, so that's going to be a subtraction. Five minus three is two and the two oxygens go on the same side as the bigger of those two numbers. So five minus three is two. The two is gonna go over here. Okay, so we look up here and this reaction that we just created matches the target. So that means we've done everything right. So we're gonna go ahead and add these two numbers together. Okay, and when we do that, we get a delta H of negative 1,300 kilojoules. Okay, and that takes care of that. So just practice these. You don't have to do a hundred problems. Just do three or four over and over until you totally understand where the numbers came from. Okay. All right. That takes care of this answers video.